Welcome to V is for volunteers on the political trenches, local government at work. Our guest today is Ashley Seymour, the executive director of Volunteer Manitoba. Volunteer Manitoba stands as a steadfast pillar, nurturing the spirit of volunteerism and fostering collaboration within the dynamic landscape of Manitoba's community sector. Their unwavering commitment revolves around supporting individuals eager to contribute their time and skills, as well as empowering community agencies, nonprofits, and charities that form the backbone of vibrant, the vibrant province that is Manitoba. By championing the volunteer sector, Volunteer Manitoba plays a pivotal role in enhancing the capacity to anticipate, celebrate, and address the diverse needs woven into the fabric of the province. Volunteer Manitoba envisions a future where it serves as the leader and catalyst engaging all Manitobans in the spirit of volunteerism, thereby shaping a stronger, more connected province. So with that, welcome to the Political Trench. Is Ashley. Thank you for having me. So Ashley, I'm going to kick off the line of questioning here, and I want to start by getting to know about the organization a little bit. And how does Volunteer Manitoba support individuals who wish to contribute their time and skills to volunteer work in their community? Yeah, so Volunteer Manitoba has actually been in existence now for oh almost 50 years. Um, we're we're going to be approaching our 50th anniversary in the next few years, which is really exciting. And over the years, you know, it's certainly evolved um, just to keep up with the times and the trends um, that we face here in Manitoba. Um, so in terms of, you know, our current work and what we're doing to support volunteerism and connect folks, um, we, we do that in a number of ways. So we offer a referral service. Um, folks often will either drop by our office, they'll call or email, letting us know that they're looking to get involved, that they're looking for a volunteer opportunity, and they really have no idea where to start. Um, so we're able to sort of walk them through a few different options. Um, one of the pages on our website is dedicated to posting volunteer opportunities that are available across the province. So many, many nonprofit and community-based organizations come to us they post their opportunities. And that way, when people also come to us looking to volunteer, that we're able to connect them with those opportunities that are available. We can support people by sort of narrowing down what their interests are, um, how much time they're able to commit, maybe what area of the city or the province that they're looking to, to get involved. Um, do they have particular interests, um, skills that they're looking to give back? Um, and so based on sort of those conversations, we're really able to connect people with the opportunities that are available in their desired communities. And with that, what role do you as volunteer, as I say you is in the royal you, what role does Volunteer Manitoba play in powering the community? Because you talk about the website where people are linked, but uh, I'm assuming there are countless opportunities for people to volunteer, countless organizations wanting the call for volunteers. What role does Volunteer Manitoba play in addressing the needs and wants of these individual charities, nonprofit organizations, and community agencies? Yeah, so we have a number of you know opportunities in different ways that we're able to do that. Um, we get out into the community as much as we're able. Um, we are a small team. We sort of flex between five and six staff at any given time. And so, you know, as much as we'd love to be in every community, that can be challenging sometimes. Um, but we do engage with a lot of community organizations who invite us to come and give presentations on. Um, not just the value of volunteerism, but again, how to get involved. Um, and so whether that's working with like newcomer serving organizations or youth serving organizations, we're able to give a presentation and share the benefits for the individuals and for the community organizations that we work with. Um, we also host a number of volunteer recruitment fairs throughout the year. We have some great relationships built with post-secondary institutions all across the province. Um, so we go and set up at the different universities and colleges. We invite community nonprofits to join us. And that gives us the opportunity to engage with students who are looking to maybe get some skills, build their resumes, um, just learn about the communities that are out there and the organizations and the work that they're doing. Um, a lot of students love, you know, to build their resume, especially if they're nearing maybe the end of their studies. 
Um, and so we're able to, again, make those connections between community organizations that need volunteers and then those folks that are looking for those opportunities. Um, and so then we also host like general uh, volunteer recruitment fairs in different communities as well. So not just with uh, like post-secondaries. Um, and so we've traveled to a few different rural communities in the last while to host volunteer fairs. Um, we've got some really exciting plans coming for the spring of 2024. Um, and I can't share too many details yet, but stay tuned for more information. But uh, yeah, like we're out in the community as much as we're able to, both advocating for the organizations that need volunteers, and then trying to, again, connect those people that are looking for opportunities. Hmm. I'm going to jump in if I can now too, actually. Uh, you've talked quite a lot about uh, about the concept of volunteers and where are the volunteers coming from these days? We hear a lot about things like volunteer burnout, and it's the same old, same old people. Where are the new people coming from? And maybe I'll address my second question right now too, is how do we address things like volunteer burnout? Yeah, and so that's been very interesting, sort of post pandemic, um, you know, it's no secret that volunteerism is on a bit of a decline from what it was before. Um, and that's certainly due to a number of factors, you know, people are maybe a little bit more selective with their, their spare time. The pandemic has taught us, you know, sort of how to value our time a little bit differently. So trying to re-engage those volunteers that were very active before the pandemic, um, that's definitely been a challenge. Um, we're also seeing, you know, with the challenging economic times that we're in, that people need to work more, right? People need to earn more money. And so their disposable time is not that readily available. Um, so I kind of go back to my earlier comment about we're really trying to engage with students. Um, we do a lot of work with newcomer serving organizations because there's such tremendous value to that community to, you know, do some volunteering. It helps you to learn about your community, make those social connections, develop some skills. Um, so they've been a really valuable um, group to engage with. Um, we're also looking to re-engage and reconnect with some of the seniors serving organizations across the province, because historically seniors and retired folks and older adults were the ones that were, you know, maybe had some more time that they were able to give. Um, and that population, you know, was really highly affected by the pandemic. They were the most high risk. So we're definitely seeing a lot of those folks may be more apprehensive to returning to, you know, what they previously did. And and that community has aged significantly as well in the last few years, so maybe aren't as active. Um, so yeah, we've certainly got you know our, our ear out there and we're trying to connect with as many folks as possible. And certainly youth, youth uh, have such a tremendous opportunity to get involved in the community. And so that you know we're visiting schools as much as we can to just really instill that importance and that value in, in the younger generation of Manitobans. <laughs> What's the mo about the motivation of volunteers? You mentioned generational shifts, or at least alluded to them a little bit too. Are you seeing what's motivating a volunteers changing over the years as well? Yeah, I think so, right? Back, I think a number of years ago, volunteerism in certain capacities was just something that people did. Um, and so it's taken a lot of maybe extra effort to educate people about those benefits. Right. So when we talk to youth, it's about gaining some skills. You know, you can work on building your resume um, and maybe the networking component, meeting people where opportunities for future opportunities might arise um, and just really finding that value for, you know, everybody else um, in the community as to why, like the importance and the value of getting involved in your community. Um, and so we certainly change our approach depending on the audience that we're connecting with. Um, like I mentioned, newcomers, youth, seniors. And so when we give presentations to these folks, we definitely, you know, sort of target um, our message to that audience. Um, and then we're really looking to try and partner with the Mental Health Association um, of our, our province because there is such positive effects on a person's mental health when they're involved in community and doing volunteer roles. Um, and so we know in our society right now that that can be a bit of a challenge for some people and so we really you know aside from the skills and the the social connections um, we really want to sort of focus on the positive mental health benefits that it can bring to you as well thanks 
Are you seeing one type of sector being in need of more volunteers than others? You talk about uh, community organizations, you talk about nonprofits. Is there one particular area in the province of Manitoba where you're seeing a more urgent need for volunteers compared to other sectors in the province? Or is it just a cross gambit? Because we talk about the the sort of recruitment of volunteers being a requirement or a need, but what are the community organizations, the nonprofits telling you, or even municipalities, because municipalities are uh, often require volunteers as well. What are you hearing from the organizations about what their requirements are? Yeah, it's interesting that it's not really one specific area of the sector. We're seeing a shortage across the board. Um, it doesn't really matter what type of services and programs they offer. Um, everybody has a really big need right now. Um, one thing that is sort of interesting that we're noticing is a real need for people to join a board of a community organization. And so with that too, that's that awareness piece again. Um, traditionally, boards have been led by maybe some older adults or people nearing the end of their careers. Um, and so there's been sort of a stigma around that and an apprehension for younger generations to get involved in a volunteer board of directors. Um, and so we've got a number of postings on our website and we hear from people all the time that have vacancies or shortages on their boards. Um, and so while we fully support people, you know, doing the boots on the ground work, because that's so very important as well, um, you know, the leadership of the organization is equally as important. And so really changing the, the stigma around what that means to be on a board. Um, you know, traditionally, it's sort of been this big, scary beast that it's going to take so much of your time and it carries such tremendous responsibility. And while that you know, can somewhat remain the truth. Um, it's not nearly as as scary of an experience as someone might think. And so um, we're really trying to, again, raise that awareness about that um, and encouraging people to get involved at a board level. What sort of, uh, what, what does Volunteer Manitoba offer to prospective volunteers? Because the idea of volunteering, particularly on those boards or commissions, can sometimes be daunting because it's a lot of time, it's a lot of information, and it's a lot of responsibility. Does Volunteer Manitoba play a role in helping these organizations or helping prospective volunteers on these boards in finding the right fit for the right person? Because you don't want to just put someone into an organization and say, okay, you're going to volunteer on this board. Okay, let's just drop them in and walk away. What role does Volunteer Manitoba play in sort of nurturing the educational part of volunteerism? So yeah, we actually do that sort of in a few different ways. Um, we offer a program called Board Connect. And so this is, you know, we've got a number of organizations that have come to us um, saying that they, they have vacancies, they're looking to recruit folks for their board. And so this is more so of a matching service than just our generic referral program, um, because with referrals, you know, we're able to provide some guidance, a few opportunities. Whereas the Board Connect program, we really take the time to get to know the organization and to know the individuals. If people have registered for that program, you know, we have a bit of an interview, we have a discussion, we look at their resume. And so we're able to identify the skills that they have to offer and then do that matching with an organization that is looking for somebody with that skill set. And through that program, we often encourage an, an ex officio match which means the person is, you know, present at the board level, um, is present for all the meetings and the conversations, but they're not an official director with voting capacity until both parties are comfortable with that. Um, so it provides some exposure, it provides some opportunities to learn about what that means for the individual, and it provides that same opportunity for the organization to see if this is gonna be a good match and somebody who's gonna be with them long-term because we all know what goes into onboarding somebody, bringing them up to speed. And so we, we all hope for those long-term matches, but it doesn't always work out that way necessarily. Mm -hmm. So that's one opportunity that we offer. Um, we also offer a number of workshops related to board governance that helps you know folks working in nonprofits, as well as the general public who are looking for more information about what that means. Um, so just a few examples is we offer a workshop called Roles and Responsibilities of a Nonprofit Board. 
So it's a short few hour workshop that kind of gives you an overview and an understanding of what your rights and responsibilities would be um, and what expectations there are. <clears throat> we also offer like some financial workshops around the financial responsibilities of being on a board. And then on our website, we have a number of resources around board governance and, and volunteering and being part of a board of directors. And so people are able to, you know, take a look through that information and kind of learn a little bit on their own as well before maybe taking the leap and applying for a board position. Well, when it comes to the people who are available, are you finding there are more volunteers than spots available or, or still demand outstripping supply? Yeah, we're still seeing the demand being much higher than the supply. Um, and I do believe that part of that is, in some senses, the, the awareness. Um, so again, Volunteer Manitoba, we've got some great ideas and strategies going into 2024 about, you know, raising awareness of the importance and the value of volunteerism in the community, um, because some folks might not be thinking of it, be considering it. Um, and so we're really trying to, you know, put some effort into some marketing around volunteerism in general, right. because there are certainly more positions available than there are interested folks right now. So how do we convince more people to volunteer? Not just in Manitoba, but we, we kind of go coast to coast here. Where, where do we get? Yeah, so that that's the million dollar question, right? <laughs> so it's, again, it's about the awareness. So we are out as much as we're able. Um, we're quite active on social media. Um, and we often share about the benefits of volunteerism. Um, we do a lot of work with local media, community groups, where um, our community outreach coordinator is always looking for different community events and fairs um, that we can, you know, partner with and, and be present at so we can just raise the awareness of the value of giving back to the community. Do you ever find that, that uh, volunteers are doing jobs that really ought to be paid jobs? Yeah, that's a bit of a tricky situation. We've come across that a little bit over the years. Um, and that's certainly a conversation that we have um, with the organization, specifically if they're looking to advertise on our website. Mm -hmm. And we can see that, you know, I'm looking for a volunteer to work 30 hours a week to do all the admin and accounting for my organization. That seems like it should be a paid position, right? That's going to be pretty tough to find somebody with those kinds of skills and that much time to volunteer. Um, and so, you know, we have seen that from time to time, but then it's just a matter of having a conversation with that organization and finding out really what their needs are. Um, sometimes that is truly the case. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, that's a tough, tough shoes to fill there. But uh, for the most part, I think people are pretty understanding of what the difference really should be between the two. Thanks. Now, I, I know that Volunteer Manitoba and the Association of Manitoba Municipalities just recently partnered up for an award that they're going to be presenting later on this year. I think the deadline just passed as of recording this for submissions. What role does municipalities play in fostering a good community where volunteerism can sort of be fostered? Because recognizing volunteerism is one thing, but not just recognizing it once, but over the course of the year is another thing. What role should municipalities play in supporting and working with these organizations and your organization to celebrate the volunteers that are already there? Yeah, and recognition is huge. Um, it goes so very far. It's again, something we advocate for regularly. Um, and so as somebody who resides in a small town of rural Manitoba, I can see firsthand the impact that volunteers have on our community. Um, there are so many events and programs that just simply would not happen if it wasn't for volunteers. Um, and that's the case, you know, across the province, across the country, really. So um, municipalities certainly need to, you know, again, raise awareness in their communities that these programs exist. And they exist solely because of the contributions of volunteers. And then that ongoing recognition and celebration of the commitment of those folks, um, it goes a really long way. People like to be recognized and acknowledged for their hard work. Um, and so it's important to have that ongoing recognition to support the people that are giving back to community. How do we do that in 2024 when we do have... <laughs> 
a lack of volunteers in the current situation because you can't acknowledge the same person over and over again as much as you want to. And I'm not going to try and put you on the spot here, Ashley, but I kind of have to. With the dwindling pool of volunteers, is there going to be a moment when you have to start looking at other options than just volunteer? Or do you think that this is just a blip in time right now where volunteers, we could see uh, exodus of sort of volunteerism in the next five, 10 years where people are actually willing to give back their time to their community because we are seeing that decline right now? Yeah, so that's certainly the hope. The hope for, especially from our perspective, is that we're going to see it start to increase again. Um, you know, again, just raising the awareness of the importance and the value of volunteerism. Um, that's a big part of the work that we do. And so we're going to continue to do that and hope that we get back to pre-COVID, even higher than uh, higher rates of volunteerism than what we once were. Um, and in terms of recognition, you know, it's really that ongoing acknowledgement um, of the work and the time that people have given. So um, we encourage folks to share through social media, um, you know, some, some heartwarming, great stories of the work that's being done in your community. Um, you know, certificates and small tokens of appreciation go a really long way. Um, I know that like little Tim Hortons coffee gift cards go a long way for a lot of people. So, you know, it's just those little pieces of acknowledgement for sure. And then looking for opportunities for greater acknowledgement. So um, you mentioned the partnership with the AMM around the award. And so Volunteer Manitoba were, you know, in the midst of planning the 40th anniversary of the annual volunteer awards. Um, and so that's scheduled to take place in April. And we have nine different categories this year where we've had hundreds of volunteers. Um, I was just looking at the list today. So there's been hundreds of volunteers nominated in these different categories um, from all across the province doing all kinds of amazing work. And so now we're in the process of passing that along to the juries who have the challenge of selecting the winners for the different award categories. But that's just one example of a way, you know, you can recognize the hard work and commitment of the volunteers in your community. You've left a pretty good, given us a pretty good idea of the state of volunteerism from your perspective in Manitoba. Do you, do you have any insight into whether it's any different anywhere else across the country or is it kind of similar to, do you think Manitoba is kind of similar to wherever else we might be looking? Yeah, absolutely. So we regularly connect with Volunteer Canada, right. um, as well as volunteer centers in different cities and different jurisdictions. Um, and we're hearing the same thing from coast to coast, that it's been really challenging. Um, you know, and certainly, depending on where you're located, you have a bigger pool to select from, perhaps, right? Like the bigger cities, more population, um, but it doesn't necessarily correlate to their rate of volunteerism always. So yeah, we're hearing that from coast to coast that, um, especially since the pandemic, the, the need for a lot of these services that are offered by community organizations has significantly increased, while the rate of volunteerism has either declined or stayed the same. And so people are having, you know, challenges to balance the two of them, trying to meet the demand, the, the increased demand for services with sort of less capacity to do so. So paid staff are taking on a lot of extra work, um, a lot of extra responsibilities and just trying to make, sort of make the ends meet at the end of the day. Thanks. I'm probably gonna ask the easiest question that I probably have ever asked on this show to someone in your position, but why should people volunteer in 2024? Mm, I have so many answers to that question. Like the, the list is endless. Um, I, I sort of circle back to what I had mentioned earlier, like depending on who you are and where you're at in your life, if you're a young person, you know, exploring career opportunities, thinking of your future, what a great way to do that, to build some skills. Um, we often share the story of one of our colleagues who, you know, she was fresh out of high school and thought for sure that she wanted to go into nursing as a career. And so she spent the summer volunteering at a hospital and realized really quickly that that wasn't going to be the career for her. So she pivoted her plans. Um, but what a great opportunity for young folks to, you know, maybe do some career exploration, 
to build their network and some skills. You know, for older Manitobans and older Canadians, it's such a great opportunity to maintain those social connections, your social skills. Seniors can sometimes feel isolated, especially in these cold winter months when we're not getting out as much. Um, and so the, the physical benefits of that too, they're maybe a little bit more active. Um, I talked a little bit about newcomers and the benefits there. They can learn about their community. They can meet some new folks. Um, and just, again, the, the positive effects on someone's mental health is huge. Um, you know, the social connections, everything that you gain from volunteerism um, has been proven to have positive benefits on someone's mental health. And so I feel like that's really important, as you said, in 2024, when sometimes the world can be a really heavy place. So we, we all need to do some, some positive uh, changes to improve our mental health sometimes. We often say that volunteerism is the backbone of any community. They are the ones that make our communities move forward. They are the nonprofit organizations. They are the community groups. Um, we spent the majority of this interview chatting about sort of your organization, but we always like to look at the future at the end of the interview. And I've got to ask, what is Volunteers Manitoba's vision for the future? And I'm going to quote your website a little bit here. How do you aim to be a leader and catalyst in engaging all Manitobans in volunteerism, not just in 2024, but beyond? Yeah, so I think the just being involved in the communities, just getting ourselves out to as many communities and connect with as many, you know, populations and community groups that we're able to, um, you know, again, raising the awareness of the benefits of it. Um, and in a perfect world, we would see such a small list of available opportunities on our website um, because so many of them are filled. But we're also a really strong advocate to ensure that community support, volunteerism remains a key part of like a school curriculum. Some school divisions have that component built in. Um, and so we really want to advocate that that remains so that youth are exposed to volunteerism early on in life and, and can see the benefits of that. Um, you know, and again, connecting with seniors groups, all the different community groups that we have here in Manitoba. Um, just being involved and being active um, and being at the table with them as much as we're able to just to, to advocate for volunteerism. Um, Ashley, I want to extend my and Ian's uh, gratitude for coming on and talking about volunteerism, but also Volunteer Manitoba. For those who are listening right now, the links to Volunteer Manitoba are in the show notes. So if you're looking to get involved in Manitoba, please scroll down and check it out. But thank you so much, Ashley, for doing this and participating in the show. Oh, thank you both. It was a lot of fun and I appreciate it. Thanks very much, Ashley.